In today's battle, we have Intel versus Apple Silicon, featuring the 2018 and 2020 Mac Minis. Both have 16 gigabytes of RAM, 256 gigabytes of storage, but one has a 6-core Intel Core i5, and the other has an 8-core Apple Silicon M1. We're going to be pitting them head-to-head -head in a couple of benchmarks, among which Unigine Valley, Blackmagic Disk Speed Test to see if the SSDs have improved anything. And we'll also be doing some uh, other tests, like Geekbench and Cinebench. So, let's get into it and uh, see what kind of numbers we get here. So the first thing we're going to look at is the Blackmagic Disk Speed Test. Again, both have 256 gigabytes of storage. They have the same image of Mac OS 11 Big Sur. It's a blatant time machine copy on the M1, so it's uh, as close together as possible. Let's start. All right, we'll stop them right there. As you can see, the Apple Silicon Mac Mini does almost double in terms of writes. Now, reads are about the same, ever so slightly improved. So that concludes the Blackmagic Disk Speed Test. Okay, the next benchmark will be Handbrake. We'll be converting a 2-minute 4K 30fps file down to 1080p high quality H.264. Okay, ready, set, and get my stopwatch ready. There we go, and go. Let's move on to Geekbench. So, of course, the Apple Silicon on the right is going to be running the Apple Silicon benchmark, and we're going to be running the Intel benchmark on the left. Okay, so Geekbench has finished. I wanted to stop here for a second. On the screen on your right, you can see two benchmarks for the Mac Mini 9 comma 1, or the late 2020. Um, the left tab in the browser there is the Apple Silicon score, and the tab on the right is the Intel score. So basically the benchmark run for Intel mode. And uh, even when it's just running Intel instructions, it's still faster in Geekbench than the Mac Mini late 2018 with six cores. Just wanted to let that sink in for a little bit. And the next bench is going to be Cinebench R23. On the left, Intel. On the right, Apple Silicon. Starting with the multi-core test. So, after 10 minutes of running Cinebench R23, the scores are in, the Intel scores 57.50 points, and the M1 does 77.61 points. So, uh, quite a bit faster there. Very nice to see. Okay, the final test I want to run is Unigine Valley, which is a graphics test. It is an Intel app, so the Apple Silicon Mac should be at a disadvantage here, but obviously it has a lot better graphics built in than the Intel UHD 630, which is a turd. 
So the settings we're running here, just so we can actually run it on the M1, because it will not run at ultra uh, details or extreme quality, we're running at medium, 1080p, anti-aliasing 2x, and full screen. So without further ado, let's click the run button, make him go full screen, and we're going to go to the top left corner and hit benchmark. And here we see the landslide victory for the M1 and its powerful integrated graphics. 48 FPS versus 12. So yeah. That's pretty painful, right? And I guess that really paints a pretty good picture about uh, how powerful the M1 Mac Mini is compared to the predecessor. In terms of CPU, the difference is not all that much. It is there, definitely, especially single core, there's almost 70% difference. But when it comes to multi-core, it's more like somewhere between 20 and 50%, depending on the benchmark. And uh, that's a bit more reasonable, I think. But it's mostly graphics where the uh, new M1 really, really shines. And it comes pretty close to the lower end dedicated graphics you found in previous generation Macs. For instance, the uh, 5K iMac that I did comparison on a while ago with this uh, 2018 Meg Mini that did uh, I think 56 FPS average somewhere around that point. This is pretty good in comparison to that even so. So yeah that concludes the video. I hope you enjoyed this, uh, this benchmark comparison and thank you all for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.